In this video on cranial nerve 6 palsy, we will discuss the causes, presentation and exam findings, diagnostic workup, and treatment. The extraocular muscles that control the directional movements of the eye within the orbit include the superior, medial, lateral, and inferior rectus muscles along with the superior and inferior oblique muscles. Of these muscles, all are innervated by cranial nerve 3, also known as the oculomotor nerve, as highlighted in green, except for the lateral rectus and superior oblique muscles, as shown in red and blue, respectively. The lateral rectus is innervated by cranial nerve 6, also known as the abducens nerve, while the superior oblique is innervated by cranial nerve 4, also known as the trochlear nerve. The medial and lateral rectus muscles allow for ocular motility in the horizontal plane of motion. Specifically, the medial rectus allows for adduction of the eye, whereas the lateral rectus muscle allows for abduction of the eye. Almost all cranial nerve 6 palsies are acquired later in life and are caused by conditions that have damaged the sixth cranial nerve, which supplies the lateral rectus muscle. Causes of cranial nerve 6 palsy include the following. Poor blood supply caused by a combination of factors such as high blood pressure, diabetes, raised cholesterol, and smoking. This is referred to as a microvascular palsy. Direct pressure caused by tumors, middle ear infections, or swelling of neighboring blood vessels can also damage the sixth nerve. Due to its long path along the subarachnoid space, the sixth nerve is particularly susceptible to damage due to traction forces of trauma and elevated intracranial pressure along this space. In addition, inflammation in the region of the nerve, as may be caused by multiple sclerosis or vasculitis, can also lead to a sixth nerve palsy. Patients with a sixth nerve palsy characteristically present with horizontal diplopia that is worse when looking in the direction of the affected eye and when fixating at a distance as compared to near. On ocular motility exam, patients will exhibit an esotropia or nasal deviation of the affected eye with limited abduction of the affected eye. Below is an example of a patient with an isolated sixth cranial nerve palsy of the right eye. As shown in figure one, there is full adduction of the right eye on left gaze, whereas in figure two, there is limited abduction of the right eye on right gaze. Patients may compensate for this by turning their head to the affected side as a way of mitigating their symptoms of diplopia. In this patient, we can see that she has full adduction of both eyes on right lateral gaze, but has an abduction deficit of the left eye on left lateral gaze. This is consistent with a left six nerve palsy. In addition to acquiring a detailed history, including the pattern of onset and associated symptoms, diagnostic workup includes the following. Since a sixth nerve palsy can be a sign of raised intracranial pressure, it is important to note that a fundus exam should be performed in all patients to assess for papilledema, or swelling of the optic nerve. Various lab tests and imaging are also indicated to investigate the cause of the sixth nerve palsy. Lab tests commonly include a CBC, hemoglobin A1C, and fasting glucose. Abnormal findings in these may be more suggestive of a microvascular cause of a sixth nerve palsy. Abnormal findings on ESR, CRP, ANA, or rheumatoid factor are more suggestive of inflammatory causes. Testing for syphilis and Lyme disease should also be considered as potential infectious causes. It is recommended to perform an MRI scan 
of both the brain and orbit. Imaging of the brain is important for ruling out potential morbid or fatal causes of a sixth nerve palsy, including malignancy, aneurysm, stroke, or demyelinating process. Incorporating an orbital scan can help differentiate from alternative causes, such as thyroid eye disease, which can often mimic the presentation of a sixth nerve palsy. Treatment varies depending on the etiology of the sixth nerve palsy and in general should address any underlying problems revealed by workup. In the setting of microvascular palsy, 80% of cases spontaneously recover within three to six months. However, it's important to keep in mind that spontaneous recovery is less likely to occur if caused by a head injury or tumor. Various approaches can also be pursued for treating the patient's diplopia and for providing symptomatic relief. Among these, occlusion of one eye using a patch or fogging plastic tape as installed in the patient's spectacles can be used to relieve symptomatic diplopia. In addition, prisms may be fitted in a patient's glasses for temporary relief or for chronic stable deviations. This may reduce and in some cases completely resolve the patient's diplopia. Botox may be considered in cases where the angle of the deviation is too large to correct with prisms. In particular, injection of the medial rectus muscle can help reduce the size of nasal deviation by the affected eye. In cases of a stable deviation that persists for greater than six months, strabismus surgery can be considered for treatment.